Hello, welcome to Literary Life and welcome to this video where I'm going to talk to you about a new book prize to me <laughs> that I just became aware of that I am following and that is the Republic of Consciousness Prize. Now, this is an organization that focuses on small presses and there's actually two arms of them. One is for the UK and Ireland, and then one is for the US and Canada. Now, the US and Canada one already ended, announced the winner. That was right at the time I discovered this organization. Uh, so I will definitely follow along with that one next year. But this year, the UK and Ireland one um, has just announced the shortlist, and on April 17th, they are going to announce the winner. So I am reading the shortlist, the five books, and I wanted to give you a quick overview on them today, um, as well as let you know about this prize, because I think it's really great if you're a, a reader like me and you're really interested in learning more about the indie and small presses out there. Um, this is a great opportunity, a great way to get introduced to these smaller presses. And when I went to the Republic of Consciousness is website, <laughs> that, was, that was a mouthful, they have a book of the month subscription. This subscription is what funds the prize. So essentially, small presses will donate a book every month to them. Um, these are high quality books and we can subscribe. So you guys are going to be so shocked. I subscribed. So you can definitely as know as I get those books in month over month, I will be sharing um, the unboxings with you. And then, of course, they will be part of my book reviews. I will stay on top of reading them. I am so excited about that because A, I love my subscriptions and B, what a great way to explore the indie small presses like I've wanted to and then this literature to get ex um, exposed to it like I've wanted to for this year. I will share a link below to the page for the book subscription as well as just the prize if you're interested. Now, let's start talking about this, these five books. I have ordered all of them. Two of them have arrived by the time I'm filming this video. So some of them that are still coming in this next week, I will just pop a photo up above here. So let's start with the first book, Out of Earth by Shayla Smanyota. And I'm probably mispronouncing that. This is from Boiler House Press. This book is going to follow for, I don't know if you could hear Grayson back there grumbling, but that's what it was if you did. This story is going to follow four generations of female characters as they navigate the hardships of life in the parched landscape of the Brazilian. Certeo. I don't know yet what that is, but this is why I read. I'm excited. I'm going to learn. Um, the male figures in the story are peripheral, but they're also revealed as the origin of much of the suffering in the novel generating for the woman a kind of exile, not only in relation to the land, but to their sense of self. This is a groundbreaking feminist work, a bracing modernist fable of sorts. I was really intrigued. You guys know I love my manner, multi-generational novels. And then this book is also going to um, tackle brutality and violence. The judges commented on this and the fam familial relationships in a way that has a lot of tact to it. So I was really intrigued by that presentation as well. The next book that was selected for the shortlist is Avenues by Train by Farai Mudzingwa. This book was published by Cassava Republic. This, we have a seven-year-old protagonist, Jedza, witnesses a tragic incident involving a train and the death of his close boyhood friend in his hometown, Miner's Drift. He is convinced that his life is haunted. Now he's in his mid-20s. He's a down-and-out electrician. He's moved to Harare in the hopes that he will escape the darkness and superstitions of the small town. But living in the avenues, he's tormented by the disappearance of his sister and their early encounters with ancestral spirits, the shape-shifting power of the Juzu and a vengeful Ngozi. You guys, I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering those. To move forward, he must stop running away and confront the trauma of his past. Now, this is a debut and I'm really, I'm just intrigued by all the different cultural components to the story, these spirits, these entities that I'm not familiar with at all. 
um, as well as just this experience, you know, um, characters who have faced trauma and difficulties and then how they process those, overcome those, always very intriguing for me. So really caught up in this one um, in particular. This is one of the ones that I was like, I, okay, really, really, really want to read this one. Okay, then the third book is by Anna Paula Mai, and it's of cattle and men. This was um, published by Charco Press. This is uh, a landscape worthy of Cormac McCarthy. So if you're a Cormac McCarthy fan, note that. The river runs septic with blood. Edgar Wilson makes the sign of the cross on the forehead of a cow, then stuns it with a mallet. It's important to calm the cows, especially now that they seem so unsettled. Bronco Gill, the foreman, thinks it's a jaguar or a wild boar. Edgar Wilson has other suspicions, but what is certain is that there is something in this desolate corner of Brazil driving men and animals to murder and madness. And this is a type of thriller. And of course, you guys know, because I'm trying to get in so many books right now that I'm so excited out in this one <laughs> is because literally the first thing I said with the next book is, oh my God, look how big that is. My husband, Chris, he pulled it out of the box. And that was the first word out of my mouth is like, oh, no, it's so big because <laughs> I'm trying to read so many right now. So let's talk about this book, The End of August by You, uh, you Mary. This was published by Tilted Axis Press. <laughs> this book set in 1930s. We're going to be in Japanese occupied Korea. And what's perfect about this is right now I am reading this book here, which is Mater 210. That's also set in Korea. And part of the timeline of Mater 210 is during the Japanese occupation. So I love that I'm really going to get that part of Korea and Korean history locked into my brain by reading about it in two different books. Um, so, but back to 1930s, Japanese occupied Korea, our main character um, running a prodigy and a con he's a running prodigy and a contender for the upcoming Tokyo Olympics. But he would have had to run under the Japanese flag. Nearly a century later, his granddaughter, who's living in Japan, is training to run a marathon herself, immersing herself into the painful histories of her family and the Korean and Japanese communities of Muryang, Korea. The End of August is a semi-autobiographical investigation into nationhood and family, what you are born into and what is imposed. Through a meditative dance of generations, the author is going to move us across borders and time, shedding light onto the experiences of Japan's Zainichi, which is second and third generation Korean communities. It's so interesting because these semi-autobiographical, they're fiction, yet they are based on the author's lives, um, has really been a trend of late. I am reading um, the book Change. I think that was, oh God, I'm trying to remember what word that one came from, but that is a similar book by an author who um, uh, moved to Paris, but had been uh, born into poverty and just wanted to rewrite his identity and his life. So he started to hang out with millionaires um, and basically uh, kind of said, this is what I want to be. And he created a whole new life. I haven't read that one yet, but I'll be sharing that with you, um, which is completely off subject. That is not a book on this short list. But again, there's like that is one. But there's been like three other books that have crossed my radar lately that are books where the author is creating a piece of fiction, but loosely based on some form of a semi-autobiography. So I find that very interesting that we have another one here. All right. The final book is The Z Zika Marin by Maxime Knack, and this is published by the Scotland Street Press. So this is The 100 Tales, and the Zika Marin are based on the 14th century Decameron, but Knack is closer to Beckett, then to Boccaccio. No idea what I just said to you. <laughs> but humility and brutality vie with the human ability to overcome oppression. Knack's stories in different voices chart 100 days in prison in Belarus today. 
The tone is laconic, ironic, the humor dry. The stories bear witness to resistance and self-assertion and the genuine warmth and appreciation of fellow prisoners. Knack wrote these stories from within prison, and they later found their way outside the prison walls. Um, I Apparently, these are powerful stories by imprisoned Belarusian lawyer and an activist. So this is one... I'm, I have very little, obviously, knowledge about, but I'm really intrigued. First of all, I don't know that I've ever written a written, I've never written a book, period, but I've ever read a book by a Belarusian, anyone from Belarus. I don't think I ever had even read a book set there. So that definitely intrigues me. Um, and so there is a lot. I think that the story, this is going to be a, this is going to be an interesting one for me because I think this is the only one that is originating in a country that I have zero literary exposure to. Um, so that is really cool. Um, so one of the things I did, guys, that I was going to mention at the beginning and forgot, I joined StoryGraph. <laughs> I'm like so, like people have probably been doing this now for like five years. I'm like, okay, I'm finally here. I finally joined StoryGraph. It's really cool. <laughs> I'm like, wow, look at all this information. One of the things I loved are the reading challenges. So I created one for the shortlist for this prize. Um, my, I will put it in the description below, a link to that, as well as just a link to if you want to join me on StoryGraph. If you're not familiar, it's very similar to Goodreads, but it's got differences. Um, it gives you a lot of visualized like charts around the type of books you read and then it's got these challenges you can join that um, I don't think Goodreads does in the same way that are super easy and fun. Um, so it, it's cool because it's similar to Goodreads, but different enough to be different so that I'm definitely going to maintain presence on both um, StoryGraph and Goodreads. But I will put a link below if you would um, want to join in the reading challenge. Let me know below. But definitely um, you can follow along and join in and track your own progress. And look out for Literary Life 221B, Sherlock Holmes, if you are familiar. Um, that is who I am, but I'll have that below as well. And join me on StoryGraph or you know, reach out to me if you're you're there already and have been there for years. Um, Cause yeah, I'm sometimes I'm a little slow on the uptake, but this is it, you guys. I'm super excited about this one because this is really all the things that I am looking for um, delving into this year. Right, are getting in more informed around these small indie presses, getting more exposure to international literature. All of it is here. And then, of course, just more awareness of the various book awards and really honing in on the half dozen or so that I'm going to really follow a year that I enjoy um, and reading their selections and um, just getting exposed to all these authors. There's so much great literature out there. So, yeah, here's another one um, that makes three right now. I am reading <laughs> books for three prizes. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's been good though, you guys. I have to say I'm so excited to put up the review videos um, and share them with you here. Uh, I'm going to probably do like once I read five or six books because the literature has been really interesting and really good. So um, definitely look out for those. But other than that, thank you as always for being here and for being a part of my literary life. Uh, now let's go, let's go start reading some of these books. Happy reading.